to Midday Kentucky, everyone. And again, thank you for joining us on what is a fantastic family day for Thanksgiving. I want to welcome In the Kitchen, Alison, how are you? I'm good. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. So, <laughs> well, it's smelling like Thanksgiving here in the kitchen. Tell me a little bit about what we're doing. Okay, well, it's turkey day, so it's all <laughs> about the turkey and the gravy and the must-haves of Thanksgiving. Okay, I don't know where to make gravy or even how, where to start, and I do know that you would kill me if I used Gravox or a powdered gravy. We're not using it out of okay. a bag or out of a can, <laughs> okay? All right, where do we go? All right, so the first thing you start with is the drippings. So it's all about when you cook that turkey, you have all that wonderful juice and all that flavor, yep. and so you want to save that and you want to put that into a pot, and you start cooking that first, so that's where a lot of the flavor from your gravy comes from. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, so you don't waste anything. Okay. All right, so we have our drippings here, and um, basically we're going to add in flour, and I am notorious for not using measurements, so your flour just goes in until you kind of get a nice little paste. Okay, and I want to ask you, Alison, my grandmother used to say to me, that's what we call making a roux. You're right. I she know something, right. everyone. He's on the ball. Okay. <laughs> um, so a roux is 50-50 fat and flour cooked. That's it. So you can use any kind of fat, really. If you don't have the turkey drippings, you could use bacon drippings. But we're not using a kangaroo. That's what you're telling no, me. No, no okay. kangaroo. How long are you stirring that for, whipping that around? Really, I just want to get it smooth, and then it's a matter of a three simple ingredients to add to that. Okay. So this is a giblet gravy. So we went ahead and cooked the giblet. So when you get the turkey um, out of the bag and you've got it ready to go in the oven, yeah. you have the neck inside, and then you have those little, you know, bits. The bits that no one wants to talk right, about. Right, but that's what the giblets are. So you actually boil that for about an hour to cook those down, okay. chop them up, and then they go into your gravy. All and right. that now is the giblet gravy, okay? So we're taking our turkey broth, and we're adding that in with the gravy, and then just More. salt and pepper. Can I have a smell? You can. Oh my gosh, that smells so divine, I can tell you. And turkey broth, you can make at home, because after you carve your turkey, which you're getting ready to talk about, yeah. you can take the carcass, take the bones, and you can cook make it in water. turkey soup? And um, Well, yeah, you can make turkey <laughs> soup, but we're making a turkey broth with just okay, different so bits. Okay, so how much longer do we need to make that That's for? it. We're just going to let it simmer, and it's good to okay, go. Okay, I'm going to jump over this side, because I do know there's the do's and don'ts of carving a turkey. Yes. Now, I can only assume one would start with the right knife. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to stab me then right for a knife. moment. I have the right knife. <laughs> we have a boning knife. Okay, so the boning knife is going to help you get in um, between uh, the bones and your cuts a little bit more precise. Okay. Well, why do I see so many movies, American movies, all with the carving, the electric carving knife? Well, is that a is that a no? Maybe that's just a movie thing. I don't know. <laughs> and maybe people don't have a boning knife. It is oh. one of the knives that's probably later um, in your investment because you invest in the chef's knife, the paring knife, the bread knife. And if you have good knives, they're not that cheap. So okay. the boning knife comes maybe a little bit later. Perfect. So you might end up going with your bread knife or your serrated knife, which can also help you get in there. So as you're well. taking the legs off. Yeah. So you start with the wing. Yeah. So you just kind of go in around that um, knuckle. And okay. you're always, when you're cutting your uh, turkey, you're going around the joints, okay? Okay. So we cut into the joint and then around the joint. You can't actually cut through the bone, so you have to find those joints to be able to cut uh, I'm going to tell you to move along because I'm telling you people, it this smells turkey so good. smells so good. <laughs> All right, so that's basically like the first part. And then you can cut actually between um, the thigh and the drumstick. Again, okay. you have to cut right through that joint. So I got you. I will turn that up so you guys can see. Uh, but you cut that right through. That didn't seem very hard. No, because once you feel, you just kind of feel with your knuckle. All right, show me how to slice a little All bit right. of this off. You go right through the breastbone. And we cut right through the breastbone. And you just basically take your knife and trim it along Look that breastbone. Look at you, breast you're bone. a pro. And there you go. She's You've got that meat life, right off. Well, you better watch out. <laughs> well, of course, you can find out how we make this fantastic gravy and also tips on carving your perfect turkey on our website at abc36 forward slash midday kentucky it is all going to be there for you Alison, we love that you're here again from oh, wild time I love cooking being here. everything's fantastic at home for the kids yes we just finished watching the parade fantastic. and it's getting ready to be grub time oh my <laughs> gosh thank you so much we really appreciate it i'm ready to taste this so we'll be right back after this short break there you go Mm-hmm.